All right, guys, welcome to Math 0106, Lesson 8. Today, we're going to be talking about adding and subtracting fractions, and this is one of the biggest issues that students have. Um, to start this off, let's do a quick example to understand what exactly is occurring. So let's say I have a pizza, and I cut it up into fourths. So I have two pizzas, and this pizza I eat one slice, and this pizza I eat two slices. So what happens total is how many slices of pizza do I eat? Well, we can see here we have one fourth and here we have two fourths. So when we put it all together, we have three fourths, right? You can literally see you take a fourth here, another fourth here, another fourth here. That's a total of three fourths. And this is what, um, when the denominators are the same, this is why what we say is we add the numerators, right? So the numerators are being added, one plus two is three, but the denominator stays the same, this is why. So what I would stress is uh, don't memorize random rules, try to understand why that's the case. So you can see here that they give instructions here, they say add the numerator, numerator being the top number, place the sum over the common denominator, and if possible, reduce. It's a series of, of instructions that you can follow to, to doing this. But again, my advice is to understand why that, that is the case. So in each of these, we're just going to be adding and subtracting the denominator. So in number one, it says one fifth plus two fifths. We know that that's just going to be three fifths. Uh, number two, three plus three sevenths plus two sevenths. Three plus two is five, so five sevenths. Uh, number three, uh, two ninths plus two ninths. That is going to be four ninths. Number four, three fourths plus one fourth is four over four, which reduces to one. Uh, number five is the example that I just did. Two fourths plus one fourth is three fourths. Uh, five thirteenths plus four thirteenths is nine thirteenths. I'm going to have to erase to create some space. Uh, in subtraction, it's the same thing. So two six minus one six is the same thing as two minus 1 over 6, which is 1 6. 3 eighths minus 3 eighths. So this is a very important idea in math, is that it doesn't even matter what it is. So let's say I give you something strange, like a sine function minus a sine function. Well, because these are the same thing, they're going to subtract out, and they're going to get 0. So this is going to become 0. Or you could think of it as 3 minus 3 over 8, which is 0 over 8. And so this is, this is an important idea as well, which is that if I cut my pizza, let's see here, bear with me, my artistic talent is, that's six, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nope, I'm correct. It's eight. Um, if I cut a pizza, this is basically saying you're cutting the pizza into eight slices and you are taking zero slices of it. So how much pizza have you ate? And zero slices of pizza, right? Um, again, I'm going to have to erase to create some space. Number nine, uh, so you're just subtracting. So three minus one is two. So two tenths, two tenths reduces to one fifth. They're both divisible by five, by two. Uh, seven twentieths minus three twentieths is going to give me seven minus three is four. So four twentieths, and both these are divisible by two. If my pen will let me write dot. And so this will give me 2 over 10, and then I can divide that again by 2. Some of you may be looking at this and like, Mr. Anderson, why don't you just divide through by 4? I could have. I just wanted to show you another a way of looking at it. Um, if you'll permit me, I'll just keep... Well, yeah, I guess I'm just going to keep erasing. So if you need to see that, obviously you can just subtract. Uh, subtract. You can obviously uh, re back... Rewind the video. There you go. Rewind the video and uh, see how to s the, the previous question. Uh, in any case, 2 fifteenths plus 4 fifteenths is going to become 2 plus 4 over 15, which is 6 over 15. And since these are both divisible by 3, I'm going to get 2 over 5. Um, the next one, one fourth plus one fourth is going to be two fourths, which is one half. 
And this is so simple, it's, it's, it's easy to illustrate. So notice that if I get and take the pizza, one fourth plus another fourth, if I just shade this whole side here, that's literally half, right? But it's also two fourths. And this is, this is what pictorially we mean when we are talking about fractions, okay? And they're giving you bigger numbers, but the idea is still the same. 33 minus 11 is 22, so this is 22 over 42. I'm not going to think about it too much. Just going to divide both by 2. I'm actually going to put it above here. It's going to get 11 over 21. 11 is prime, so I know I'm done with there. Uh, number 14. This is uh, 18 minus 10 is 8. So this is 8 out of 19. And 8 out of 19, I always feel like that can be reduced, but 19 is prime, so there's no, there's no way that's going to work. Um, let's do 15 on another page here. So... 116 plus 3 over 16 plus 5 over 16. So in this one, you're just you're still going to add. So this is nothing more than 1 plus 3 plus 5 over 16, which is 9 over 16. 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus 5 is uh, 9. So 9 over 16. 9 is 3 times 3. 16 is 2 to the 4th or 2 times 8. Um, we can't reduce that, so it's 9 over 16 is our answer. Okay, um, let's do the next ones on a separate uh, page. So 17 over 20, 4 over 20, and 1 over 20. So 17 minus, so you can see here it's going to be 17 minus 4 plus 1, minus 4 plus 1 over 20. So 17 minus 4 is 13, just think 7 minus 4 is 3. So we'll say 13 plus 1 over 20, which is 14 over 20. Now we know that both of these are going to be divisible by 2, and this is going to give me 7 over 10. And there you have it. So the other thing we're seeing here is that they may give you more numbers. You know, I'm going to just fit it here. Um, they may give us more numbers, but at the end of the day, all we're doing is adding and subtracting the top, and then we're using the, the rules we learned earlier about reducing, and we're reducing. So here's the next one. These are all subtraction. So, um, so this is 14 minus 4 is 10. 10 minus 2 is 8. So we have 8 over 45. And I encourage you, if you're looking at this and you're like, I'm not for certain if this is reducible, just rewrite it as factors. So let's say 8 is 2 times 4. 45 is 5 times 9. Can you put 2 into 5 or 9? Or can you put 4 into 5 or 9? Clearly no. So the answer is 4 over 25. Four, I'm sorry, 8 over 45. So let's look at number 18. So 18 we have... One second. 18 we have 16 over 32 minus 8 over 32 minus 4 over 32. So again, because the bottoms are the same, or the denominator is the same, we can just subtract. 16 minus 8 is 8. 8 minus 4 is 4. So we're at 4 over 32. These are both, I hope we see clear that both of these are divisible by 4, and this breaks down to 1 over 8. Cool. And the next one, 19. I think I could fit 19 down here. So in 19, we have... Uh, 18 plus 12 minus 20 all over 23. This is going to give me, let's see here. I'll just go down here. Sorry about that. Wish I had more space. Um, so 18 plus 12 is 30 minus 20 over 23, which is going to be 10 over 23. 23 is prime, so as long as 10 is less than 23, uh, there's no need to reduce any further. And last but definitely not least, number 20. This is 9 plus 3 minus 5 over 20. 9 plus 3 is 12. 12 minus 5 is 7. So left with 7 over 20. Uh, keep in mind, when you're doing this, uh, one thing that you can um, also do is, if you prefer, 
you could do three minus five first and then tack that to set to nine. So um, if you know how to do three minus five, that is negative two, nine minus two is seven. So the order is, is up to you. Um, if what I just said is confusing, don't worry about it. Just keep doing it, reading it left to right and you'll be fine. Okay, so I uh, wanted to zip through that section because basically if the bottoms match, then you just add the tops. This is really the meat and potatoes of this. So number one, we have one over two plus one over three. And the issue here is that now you can't just add them because this goes back to when we were talking about the pizza example when we first were talking about the graphical representation of uh, fractions. So what we're what I'm saying here is that let's say I buy a slice of pizza and because I go to the I f frequently go to the pizzeria, they give me when I give a slice it's it's not only a New York slice it's like a super New York slice and they give me half the pizza when I buy a slice. For you it's still a pretty big slice but you're getting only a third of the pizza. So the question is. How would you feel about that if we're paying the same amount? Well, you should be upset because I'm paying the same amount of money as you, but I'm getting more pizza, right? So wouldn't it be fair to just add them together? Instead, what we have to do is we have to take what we're literally doing in terms of a, a picture is we have to somehow cut up the picture into equal parts. So what we do is you can see here that if I cut the picture into one, two, three, four, five, six. I can evenly cut both of these into six pieces. One, two, three, four, six pieces, five, six. So that's two. Okay, so what does that mean in terms of the fraction? Well, the fraction, what we're really saying is we need to get a common denominator. The common denominator, the the, the what you want to strive for at least is a common denominator that is the LCM. So this is why we had spent so much time on the LCM. So with two and three, we know that two and three are both prime, so two times three is six. And so we can multiply both of these by three here and here by two. And the reason why this is like a legit math move is that three over three is technically one. And if you're multiplying any number by one, you're not changing anything really. So it's just a way to kind of change it so that we can visualize it in terms of sixths instead of half and a third. So in other words, what I'm saying is three six is one half and two six is one third. But now, since we're comparing equal equal slices of pizza, it's fair to add them together and say, hey, look, we just ate five sixes of the pizza. Okay. So there is another way of doing this. So let's rewrite the problem here one half plus one third. And this is, I've never heard it formally called anything. I call it the X-Men rule just because it makes an X. And so what it is is that we're doing one times three, which is three. And then we're doing two times one, which is two. And then this bar here at the end is what you do to the bottom. So two times three, which is six. So it's a nice little visualization of what's occurring here. And then you just add them together. So five plus two, I'm sorry, three plus two is five. And so it's five over six. So if you like that, you can do that. And actually you can always do that. Um, the only problem is, is that it's not actually getting you the LCM. So let's do an example of that. So everybody can see that I just did number one. The answer there is five, six, but let's, let's look at another example. Um, let's look at number two. So in number two, uh, one third plus five twelfths. So if you wanted to apply the X-Men rule, you could. So one times 12 is 12. Three times five is 15. Three times two, I'm sorry, three times 12 is 36, which would give me 27 over 36. But ah, see what happens. You ha now have to reduce these. I think they're both divisible by nine. So this would give me three over four. So the drawback, the nice thing about the X-Men rule, as I like to call it, is that when you apply it, you don't have to think. The problem with the X-Men rule is that if it's not 
if the two numbers are not such that when you multiply them together, you get the LCM, which is not always the case. So if it's like in this one, if that's the case, then you're going to have to reduce. So the alternative method towards doing this, let's see if I can fit this here, is we want to get the denominators to match. So to get the denominators to match, I'm going to multiply by 4 and 4 here. Why? Because the common denominator is 12. The LCM is 12. How do I know the LCM is 12? Again, go back to the rules. Remember I said, take the biggest number, 12, ask yourself, does 3 go into 12? Because it does, that is the LCM. So now when we solve, we get 9 over 12, and because the numbers are smaller, it's a little easier on the eyes. Like so, because the numbers are smaller, it's a little easier on the eyes to get to your answer. Um, as numbers grow bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, this first method is um, going to be increasingly difficult because when you multiply these two together, you can get pretty big numbers pretty quickly. So my advice is this, is that if you can quickly see what the LCM is, uh, this method here is the more effective method, the traditional method. But if you can't, if you're not seeing it, don't waste your time. Just multiply through and, and, and you'll get it to work. Um, something else that is actually a recommendation that I have is you don't need to write the denominator as 3 times 12, which is 36. So notice I can leave this as 3 times 12. Don't multiply it together. And so you may be thinking to yourself, well, why would I want to do that? Well, it's a lot easier. It may be a lot easier to see that 3 goes into 27, right? There's no need to make the number bigger, right? And then see that 12 and 9 are both divisible by 3, and you get 3 fourths. So 3 times 12 is not so, not so hard to do in your head, um, but if the numbers get bigger... If you're going to use the X-Men rule, there's no need to multiply the two numbers together. I don't need to do that operation because it's very easy. It's actually easier to see if the number is factored out. So keep that in mind as well as you work through it. Okay, so that is number two. So let's see here. We're on to number three. So one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to erase this. I'm just going to do my work off to the side. Again, if you need to see the previous question, just go back through and... Uh, rewind the video and you will get to that. I feel it's weird saying rewind something because there's no there's nothing to wind, but I guess that's the term. Okay. Thoughts. All right, so here what am I going to do? So what I'm going to do in each of these is approach it the way that I see is most effective. So there's multiple ways. Um I just don't have enough time in one video and I think it it would be very long and tedious if I did the entire video um, multiple ways. So I'm going to instead choose the most effective, what I think is the most effective way. If you wish that I do it a different way, just let me know. You can post in the comments. I'm strangely, can you work out number 14 um, the, another way? Um, and I'll do that. Um, or you can email me or whatever works best for you. Okay, so... Let's do this. So what I think is best here is to multiply both of these by 5. Why? Because 5 times 2 is 10. We can see that clearly because 2 goes into 10. So now I'm left with 5 over 10 plus 3 over 10. Add them together to get 8 over 10. So notice that even if you are um, trying to find the LCM, you may have to reduce irrespective of that. So don't think that just if you find the LCM that you don't need to reduce. And that is actually a very imp other important part, which is that a lot of tests will put 8 over 10 as the answer as well as 4 over 5. But if it says reduce or simplify completely, 4 over 5 is the appropriate response. So there's your answer. Let's do the next one. So one second. Let me try to decide what's faster. I think the eraser is faster. Okay, but I'm committed to this way, so I'm going to do it for at least the next one. Okay, so now we are on number 4, so we have 3 over 4 plus 5 over 16. Again, it's easy to see that 4 goes into 16 evenly, so 
I'm going to multiply by 4. 4, so I'm going to get 12 plus 5 over 16, which is going to give me 17 over 16. And 17 over 16 is appropriate. You could write this as, an, as a mixed number, but leaving it as an improper is fine. Remember, improper me just means that the numerator is greater than the denominator. That's all improper means. Okay, so we've done two, we've done three, we've done four, we're on to number five. Five is subtraction, but the strategy is still the same. So erasing is way faster. Okay, so let's look at number five. Um, three eighths minus three over 16. Again, I just want the denominators to match. So I can see clearly that eight goes into 16. So the LCM is 16. This is gonna be six minus three over 16, which becomes three over 16. Easy enough. Uh, number six. Now, and if you look at number six, what you'll notice is the, um, uh, the number I'm going to change now is the back number. Um, so it doesn't really, <laughs> excuse me, it does not really matter what number what number you change, you, ju you can change one, you can change both, it doesn't really matter. Um, so this is going to become 5 over 3, I'm sorry, 5 minus 3 over 6, which becomes 2, 6. Um, apparently we want you to practice reducing, so one third is our answer. Cool beans. So you can see that once you get comfortable with this, it's just, once you develop your rhythm, it's not too bad to do. Okay, let's see what the next one is. Two-thirds minus four-ninths. Uh, we've gone back to putting the, um, changing the front number. So we are the six minus four over nine. And by the way, if you're like, does it matter if I write it like this? Or the, the way below, I wrote below. Um, no, they're the same thing. They mean the same thing. It's just, I'm just emphasis this. Writing it all as one fraction emphasizes that we're subtracting the numerator. So that's why I'm doing that. Okay, so we get two ninths. Okay, number eight. So here's the first one that actually requires a little bit more thought. We have six and 20. Six does not go evenly into 20. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use what we've talked about with the LCM. I'm going to write multiples of 20. So 20 doesn't work. Um, 40, 6 doesn't go into 40 evenly. And we know this because 6 times 6 is 36, right? 7 times 6 is 42. Uh, I, this is also a great point to emphasize the fact that you really should be memorizing your multiplication tables if you don't have them memorized. It becomes increasingly difficult to do the math here without it. Okay, so we're going to multiply here. 60 is the LCM, by the way, because 6 goes into 60. So here we're going to multiply top and bottom by 10. Here we're going to multiply top and bottom by 3. And if you're confused as to why, that's because 10 times 6 is 60. 20 times 3 is 60. And if, you're, if you need to know a procedure to generating that, right, just divide the number by 6. So 6 divided by 6 is 10. That's where the 10 is coming from. Um, and for the other one, 60 divided by 20 is 3. And that's where that's coming from. So this becomes 50 minus 27 over 60. And let me get rid of these. And so now we're going to have to do 50 minus 27. And you can do this the traditional way. In my mind, what I think is 50 minus 27 is 50 minus 20, which is 30. 30 minus 7 is 23. So the answer is 23 over 60. Again, I don't have to worry about that because uh, 23 is prime. And so 23 times 2 is easy enough to see it's 46 because 3 times 2 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. And... Uh, it's not going to go into, you can see at 46, I mean, we could go a little further. We could say 23 times three, just to prove it, gives me 69. So there's no way that um, 23 is going into 60. 
Okay. Um, the other way, by the way, to, to show this is that we could rewrite 23 is prime, so I can't do anything with it, but I could rewrite 60 as uh, 6 times 10. Let's just say 6 times 10. And 6 doesn't go into 23, and 10 doesn't go into 23. Because, again, 23 is prime. So, um, let's move on. So, we just finished doing number... I should probably write which number I'm on. We're on number 9. Uh, give me one second. Let's do number 9. Number 9 is going to be... I feel like there's some sort of game that should be played as I erase and you listen to me babble about nothing. Okay. Um, let's see here. So this is, this is, we've gone back to something that's actually pretty easy. If we look at 10, 10 does go into 20. So we know that the LCM has to be 20. So we're going to multiply by 2. So that's going to be 14 minus 11 over 20, which reduces to 3 over 20. Um, again, tw 3 does not go evenly into 20, so I know I can stop. There's my answer. Uh, let's look at number 10. So, number 10 is going to be 13 over 14 minus 6 over 7. Again, it's 7 goes into 14, so I just notice I'm taking the, the smaller number and seeing if it goes into the bigger one. Uh, 6 times 2 is 12, so now we're just doing 13 minus 12, which is 1, so it's 1 over 14, and there's my answer. Okay, and on to number 11. Okay, so 11, so 11 they're trying to scare you by just saying 2, but it's very important to realize that 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1, right? You can always divide a number by 1. So you can always write a number as a fraction if you wanted to. And then once you see that, then your lights, your eyes should be like, ooh, because it's very easy to find the, the denominator, right? 1 times anything is the anything. So if I need 8, I'm going to do 8. I do not know why. I was about to rewrite what I just wrote. This is 16 over 8. So now we're going to get 5 plus 16 is 21. 21 over 8, we know that 21 is 3 times 7, 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. There's nothing more we can do there. So don't let whole numbers confuse you. It's it's just they're trying to scare you, but you just put it over 1 and you're good to go. So that's what's wonderful about 12. It's more of the same. So 3 minus 3 fourths. I'm going to rewrite 3 as 3 over 1. And then this is fantastic because it's very easy to find the LCM, and we'll simplify. Now, 12 minus 3 is what? 9. So we have 9 over 4. And there's our answer. Okay, moving right along. And now we have 1 minus 5 eighths. So there's some. There's a little trick here that we can, we can talk about, which is... Um, now, if you're looking at this, I can still follow the idea of 1 is the same thing as 1 over 1, and then I can multiply by 8 over 8, and so I get 8 over 8 minus 5 eighths, which is 3 eighths. But I want to look at this in a little bit more depth. So, first off, I naturally, I don't really need to go 1 over 1. We can naturally just say it's 8 over 8, right? Because we know 8 divided by 8 is 1. 1, right? Um, the other thing that we can do here that I want to stress is that because this relationship is always true, you see how we got 3 here and 5 minus 8 is 3? That That's actually always true. So if I gave you something like 1 minus 7 eighths, you can just go 8 minus 7 is 1 and it's 1 eighth. And you're like, well, why is that true? Because this number here, 1, can always be written as 8 over 8. So you're just doing 8 minus 7, right? You're just subtracting out this version. Um, so there you have it. So that's a nice little trick. If you ever do 1 minus something, you can literally just do numerator minus denominator, and that will be true. All right, so I got about 10 seconds left, so I am going to actually stop here and finish up 14 on another video. So I'll see you guys in the next video.